What's up guys? It's TJ Men's Holistic Health Coach here with you today. Today is number three of my Don't Sleep on Sleep Masterclass, where we're going to be reviewing all the different things that I've talked about in the past two videos and some new things that we can do to master sleep and get the best sleep quality that we can achieve so we can fill up, we can wake up the next day feeling nice, energized, and ready for the day. So we're going to be going over a few different things that we can do to calm our body down, to be able to give our body the right tools that it needs to be able to sleep well. So first off, I want to thank Matthew Walker for his book, Why We Sleep. That's where a lot of this information comes from. So first off, I'll start this video by talking about the two different subsystems that we have in our nervous system. So first off, we have what's called the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the part of our nervous system, or at least what our nervous system does when we need to be alert and there's a potential threat in the area. So our sympathetic nervous system is alerted and initiated. And our sympathetic nervous system is all about getting us ready to fight, flight, or freeze. And this is not the time when our body is gonna be ready to sleep. Instead, we're gonna to wanna to be awake. We're gonna to want to, we're gonna be willing to take action when we're in the sympathetic nervous system state. And so this is a great state to be in when we need to get things done really quickly or we have an emergency or we have a potential threat that is either chasing us or someone's attacking us or you have to slam your brakes real quick, so might crash into someone. This is a state that we want to be in at certain times and it is a very helpful state. The other state that our nervous system can be in is the parasympathetic state. So the parasympathetic mode is basically the opposite. This is our rest and digest mode. This is the mode that we are gonna to want to be able to be relaxed. We, this is the mode where we would want to be when we're not in some emergency state and there's no predators or threats around us. And we're able just to chill out, to relax, eat some food, have a good time. And this is a state that we wanna be in a lot of our lives to be able to keep our body in a nice, natural, healthy state. We don't wanna be in the sympathetic mode all the time. And the issue is a lot of us get stuck in the sympathetic mode by being stressed out by different things and things that we see as threats in our life, whether that's an angry boss, whether that's too many bills to pay, whatever it is, there's things that are going to stress us out and cause our sympathetic mode to be turned on much more than it needs to be, thus leading us to issues of trying to go to sleep because we need to be in the parasympathetic mode to be able to go to sleep and to stay asleep and have quality sleep. And so what can we do to get out of the sympathetic nervous system and back into the parasympathetic nervous system when we need to? Well, we can use something called meditation. Now we've all heard of meditation. We all think of a dude that's sitting in lotus position in a cave and he's meditating and saying, Om. Now I teach different ways of meditating and breath work practices that help people to be able to calm themselves down when they need to and to get out of the sympathetic state so they're able to sleep better, to digest better and to do different things and to heal their bodies. And so I'm gonna show you guys two different ways that we can meditate to relax ourselves, to be able to de-stress and be able to get ready to retire for the day, to go to sleep and to be able to stay asleep. So the first way is called box breathing. Very simple way. An example I'm gonna use here is with box breathing is inhaling for five seconds, then exhaling for five seconds. And another way we can do this too, is we inhale for five seconds, hold the inhale for five seconds, exhale for five seconds, hold the exhale or hold the air out for five seconds and go again. So it's, it's a box, inhale five seconds, hold five seconds, exhale five seconds, and you get the idea. And so we're, I'm just gonna do a few rounds and I invite you to do this with me. So this is something that you can get into your head. So tonight when you're ready to go to bed, you hopefully remember this practice to help you go to sleep. So real quickly, I'm inhale five seconds. And exhale for five seconds. Inhale five seconds. And exhale five seconds. Now you, you can feel your body, how different it is, especially on the exhale as it relaxes and it's able to focus on something abstract like the breath. Another thing you can do that I won't necessarily have to demonstrate because it would be hard for you to realize what I'm doing is as you breathe, you mentally say the word in. So for example, if I breathe in through my nose, you would mentally say in as you breathe in. And then as I exhale, you would say out in your head or you can say it out loud. I preferably would rather do it in my head, especially if I'm trying to sleep, I'm not gonna be talking. And so that is also something where it helps you to be centered on your breath. And the breath is a very great way 
a great tool to be centered on because it's going to help you to be able to relax because of something that's abstract. Your breath in and of itself doesn't really mean anything. It's just kind of there and it happens. So you practice watching it like you would watch a movie where you're not inside the movie, you're not messing around with the actors, you're not doing anything like that, you're just watching the movie. So it's similar to the breath, you're just watching it. This is gonna help your brain to be able to relax and to focus on something that's not gonna stress it out, like different day-to-day -day activities or different people we might see. So those are both two very simple practices that will take some practice and some, some discipline to be able to, to master better. But as you do this night after night, day after day, then it'll help you to be able to relax. And of course, there's also things you can do at any time of the day to help you to de-stress and to relax. In the last video, I mentioned magnesium. So I'm gonna go over magnesium in a little more detail this time. So magnesium is a, a vitamin and an electrolyte, something that your body really needs for many, many processes that it does. And so getting enough magnesium is very important just for all around health, but especially for sleep. If you get enough magnesium throughout your day, then your sleep is bound to be a lot better. And when I say magnesium, I don't necessarily mean just eat all the, maybe the junk food that you eat in a day and then take some supplements at night to get you enough. I would recommend actually eating a solid, good whole food diet during the day and get your magnesium sources from the food first. Then, at least what I do is I top off at the end of the day with a little bit of supplements just to really to make sure I hit my, my required daily amount of magnesium and so I'm able to sleep and have a great quality sleep. And so adult males need around 400 to 420 milligrams of magnesium daily, while adult females need around 310 to 320 milligrams of magnesium daily. So whether you get this all from foods and supplements, whether you get it all from just foods, um, either of those will be great. And if you're in a health position where you need to, for some whatever reason, only get your supplements, that is also better than no magnesium. And so getting enough magnesium is gonna be very, very helpful. Here's some, some good natural whole food sources that we can get magnesium from. So we can get magnesium from vegetables, nuts, natural and organic peanut butter, avocados, bananas, dark chocolate, tofu, and rice. So these are all great foods that you can eat with magnesium. They're high in magnesium. And the supplements I take, I take magnesium glycinate and magnesium threonate. Magnesium glycinate is a very well-absorbed form of magnesium. And magnesium threonate helps with um, cogn cognition and helping you to prevent any cognitive decline. So both are great supplements, I definitely recommend them. All links below in the description where you can get them on Amazon. Getting adequate sunlight during the day is very, very helpful to make sure that you sleep well at night. This is because, as I said in our last video, that when you get enough sunlight during the day, this will help our circadian rhythm or our bodies to know that it is time to be awake. And then of course when it's dark, it helps our bodies know it's time to be asleep. And this will definitely help our us to follow that natural rhythm, that circadian rhythm, and be in, be in tune with nature so we're able to sleep better. So make sure to try and get at least 20 minutes of sunlight a day um, if that's doable. And of course, be careful not to get too much direct sunlight and get sunburned and increase your chances of skin cancer. So of course, we want to watch out for that, but we also want to make sure we're at least getting the minimum amount of sunlight in our days so we're able to sleep well. And then speaking of light, I also want to mention LED lights or strong lights, such as the ones I have on in this room. You want to, as you get to the end of your days, you're maybe brushing teeth, you're getting ready for bed, it's good to turn off the lights as the natural darkness of the day sets in and to turn off those lights because then melatonin, the molecule that I mentioned in our last video, will be able to, to be produced and will have a sufficient amount of melatonin to help us go to sleep. And when we have bright lights on, this will actually suppress the production of melatonin and thus reducing our quality of sleep and our the time of when we can actually get to sleep once we get into bed. And so I'm also talking about phones. Make sure as we use phones or computers during the day, make sure that we are turning the screens off around 30 minutes beforehand. So that way, or at least 30 minutes beforehand, so that way we're getting our bodies that time to be able to produce and to sustain melatonin levels so we'll sleep well. Another thing I would suggest that I do myself is if you need light, for example, while you're brushing your teeth or right before you go to sleep, you can light a candle. And candles, funny enough, are light, of course, but they help produce and boost melatonin levels. And so we're actually able to sleep better using a candle before bedtime. And this is something I've seen, um, well, I've seen that has helped my life a lot lately as far as my quality of sleep goes. So candles are a great way to do it. All right, now there's plenty of studies to back this claim up. 
that getting enough exercise during your day is going to help you to sleep better at night because of course the more exercise you're doing, the more moving you're doing, the more rest you're going to need. So your body should be able to knock out a lot better once our, our head hits that pillow. And so of course exercise has a bunch of other benefits that I'd love to tell people about. But as far as sleep goes, exercise is very helpful for sleep and it'll, you'll definitely see improvements in your sleep if you make exercise a priority during the day. Now, one thing I do want to mention that I, I don't have much scientific evidence to back up, but this is something that's very anecdotal for me that I've seen that seems to ring true in my life, is that if I eat right before bed, then because I don't have gravity helping my digestive system digest food as efficiently, then I end up having indigestion and gas and, and all the things that we would not want when we're trying to sleep at night. And so this is something I see with a lot of people is that sometimes people will eat a lot and then they'll go right to bed and they'll lay down and they'll realize that their, their food doesn't get digested as well. Now again, I don't have evidence to support this other than my own experiences, but this is something I would ask people to experiment with themselves and to see if they get a better sleep at night when they are eating food right before bed. And last but not least, do not eat sugar before bed. Eating sugar before bed is going to cause blood sugar spikes and even though we might have a blood sugar crash as we go to sleep, which helps us to fall asleep quicker, then our blood sugar levels are gonna be very different when we're trying to go to sleep and may cause us to have not as good sleep quality. So we wanna make sure our blood sugar levels are a little more even as we go to sleep. And again, this is gonna be helpful if you don't eat right before bed, then, and you don't eat sugar right before bed, and this is definitely gonna help you out in the long run to be able to have better and more efficient sleep. I hope this advice is helpful for you guys. Please experiment with your bodies and see what's going to help you the most and to give you the most quality sleep that you can get. Alright guys, if you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all the things to get this video onto the algorithm and so more and more people can be helped and more and more people can have a better quality sleep and better overall health. Alright guys, we'll see you. Have a great day.